Hi, I'm Izzy, and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through all of my makes for October 2022. So on my list for October, when I planned all of this out in September, I had five items I really wanted to make. And I'm happy to report that I managed to make all five and then some. So I've got nine finished items to share with you today. And in no particular order, or maybe, yeah, maybe this was in the order I actually made the thing. Let's get going. Now, keep in mind, I was off for an entire week during the month of October, and that is why I was so productive. Basically, on a regular month, I don't get nine things done. <laughs> and one of them was well in progress when the month started. So keep that in mind. So number one is the Laundry Day Tea by Love Notions, made with a white or creamy pointel fabric that Adam from Adam Sews has kindly gifted to me. So I made the laundry day tea a couple of times. Actually, I'm wearing one today and I always had issues with the sleeves on this tea. I'm not quite sure why. Um, so I decided to make the tank version of the pattern so that I wouldn't have to worry about the sleeves. Now, it's not really perfect. There's some gaping at the arm side, but I'm gonna be wearing this usually with a cardigan or some kind of jacket, so I'm not too, too worried about it. And having a white tank in my wardrobe is gonna be very, very practical. So I made a size XL, yes, a size extra large. I did no grading and no other adjustments at all, except to shorten the pattern, which I'd shortened when I made this one, actually. So I can't remember exactly how much I shortened this by. I think it might have been an inch and a half. But yeah, shortened a little bit. But other than that, just the straight um, size XL. Now, this pattern is free if you join the Love Notions community on Facebook. Uh, so when you join, I think they send you a code that you can enter on their website and download the pattern for free. Like I said, it's a good pattern. It's a swing style top, which is nice, but I have yet to get the shoulders to fit me properly. And it's not because they're too wide. I don't know, there's some weird puffiness going around here. And I've seen this um, happen to a lot of people. So I don't know if that's something to do with the pattern or we're just not putting the sleeves in right. I have no idea. But yeah, it's a nice, comfortable tee. And um, yeah, this tank is going to go with a ton of things in my uh, fall, winter, and then basically spring and summer wardrobe. So yeah, a nice basic piece. Next was the Harmony Blouse, again by Love Notions, in a pink, rosy pink, um, ten cell twill from Blackbird Fabrics. Now I bought that fabric a while ago in one of the remnant sales, I believe, and I only had about a meter and a little less than a meter and a half. I made the size extra large, uh, which is typically my size in Love Notions, but this pattern is semi fitted at the top and then swings out and when I put it on, I realized it was very snug in the upper back, upper chest, and the arms were crazy tight. So um, it's in the mending pile at the minute because I need to remove the sleeves. I'm gonna turn this into a sleeveless tank. I need to take out the sleeves or I still have some of that fabric left. I could replace the sleeve with a flutter sleeve or make a full bicep adjustment. So lots of options here, but the bottom line is I can't really wear this. It's very uncomfortable. I will be wearing this with a Cardi on top most of the time, but I still want to be comfortable and have a decent range of movement. So when I make this again, because I will make this again, it's a good pattern. Um, I'm going to size up 
to a 2X and just make sure I've got enough room in the upper bust and upper back area. So yeah, not a huge success this one, but I learned some things. So looking at the finished garment measurements and looking at the amount of ease in the pattern is important. <laughs> also, take your measurements before you start on any new project because I've been going on the assumption that my measurements haven't really changed in the past few months and they have. So yeah, and by the way, if you're interested, um, my measurements, my current measurements are always in the description box of my videos. So if you're curious as to, you know, why I made the size I did and how much ease was in there, my measurements are always in the description box. I personally find that very helpful when I'm watching other people's videos or when I'm looking at stuff on Instagram. So my measurements are down here and in my profile on Instagram. Next up was a project for my daughter. So I've mentioned this a few times on the channel. My daughter helps me out with the videos. She does most of my editing. Um, yeah, so I pay her in garments. So once a month, I make her something. This month, I decided to make her two things or a set. I made her the Slow Pants by Made It Patterns. Now that website has been taken down, so Made It Patterns no longer exists. Um, but I love those pants and I thought my daughter would like them just as much. And to go with the Slow Pants, I made her the Unwind Sweater by Pattern Emporium. The fabric I used is a wonderful bamboo fleece I purchased from Prairie Love Knits. It's such a great fabric. It is so soft. It washes really, really well. It's easy to work with. It, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really, really good. The color for this one is, ooh, I think it was moss. So anyways, I'll try and link to the fabric itself down below. And if I can't find it, um, I'll link to the shop. It's a pretty good shop for knit fabrics here in Canada. So for the pants, I made her a size eight um, and they fit her really, really well. They were a tad long, even though I did remove, oh my goodness, how much length did I end up removing? like three inches, I think. Those pants are really, really long. So uh, next time I make these for her, I'm gonna shorten by another inch and that should be pretty, pretty good. I made the version without the stripe down the side. Now I've made those pants for myself twice already and both times I use the stripe on the side of each leg. And it's a little bit finicky to sew, to be honest. So sewing these pants without the stripe was a dream. They came together really, really quickly. So yeah, size eight, they fit her well. She loves her new pants. And uh, same thing for the unwind sweater. I ended up making her a size eight, which is pretty, actually, did I make a size eight? No, I made her a size 12 and it's really oversized on her. It's very slouchy, I mean, it's very comfortable and she loves it and she's worn it a ton. But I'm making her another one of these sweaters in November and I'm gonna size down to a size eight so that it's not so huge. Like the neckline is a little bit big and droopy on her. So I'm gonna make a size eight next time, but this is a size 12. Not much else to say about this one. I mean, both are super quick sews. Um, they're really, really comfortable and she loves them. So that's another success, I think. When I purchased the green bamboo fleece, um, to make my daughter that set, I ordered the exact same fabric in two colors, in two additional colors, a black and a wine colored. So with the black bamboo fleece, I decided to make myself a Grab a Cuppa cardigan by Pattern Emporium. 
I had seen so many people make that cardigan. It's got the nice puffy sleeves or balloon sleeves. It's oversized. It looked super snugly and cozy. It's got a bunch of different lengths. You can put buttons on or no buttons. Lots and lots of options. So I made mine with the balloon sleeves in the long version, no buttons, and I decided not to put pockets on mine. I made a size 20 based on my measurements, but it is really big, like it's really oversized. I've been wearing it. It is very nice, very comfortable, very snuggly, but it looks very relaxed. Um, it looks very, you know, weekend wear. So um, I will make it again because I do love the sleeves, but I'm going to size down probably to a size 16 next time. That's how big this thing is on me. So I'm going to make the size 16. I may make it a little bit shorter. Like this one is really, really long. So I may shorten it by just a couple of inches, just so it hits me mid thigh. This one is almost down to my knees, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's very, very big. Um, what else is there to say? Like not much. The Yeah, when I do make this again, uh, in addition to sizing down and shortening it, I will put pockets on it. Like I'll use the patch pockets. Um, I just find it strange to have a cardigan on and have nowhere to put my phone or my hands. Or, yeah, so <clears throat> I'll definitely put pockets in next time. But I'm, I'm still going to call this one a success. I've been wearing it and the fabric is amazing and it's getting cooler here. So uh, having that kind of cardigan in my wardrobe is, um, is very practical. Next up is my new Sibiu top by Itch to Stitch. I sewed this one up during Rachel from uh, Stitch Up Sew Along on October 15th. So once a month, Rachel has a sew along on her channel and a bunch of people just log on to her channel and sew with her. And in October, she made this Sibiu top, which is basically like a bat wing, um, cowl neck, casual kind of top, which is right up my alley. Um, I used a fabric from Beyond the Pink Door, which is almost like, um, it's almost like a sweatshirting, but with this really cool zebra print all over it. It's very nice and soft. It's very cozy and comfortable. Now, I made a size 18 and made no alterations to the pattern forgetting that I need to shorten things when I make itch to stitch patterns. I need to shorten the bodice by at least one and a half to two inches. And I definitely need to shorten the sleeves when they're long sleeves. So the cuff on my new top hits me like in a weird spot. It's just too low. So next time I make this, I will shorten the upper sleeve by at least two inches. Um, I will shorten the bodice um, by maybe one and a half inch. Yeah, because there's a bottom band on this. And although the bottom band is not tight, it's not snug, it hits me at a point where it's basically hitting me at my widest spot on my body. And I'm not crazy about that. So I'm going to shorten the bodice so that the band hits me more around my high hip. I think I'm going to like that better. But yeah, other than that, again, I've been wearing this top a lot. It's nice and comfortable and it looks kind of fun. And on video calls, you see that zebra print. It's yeah, it's just fun. It's a fun new top. Next is a Rockford Raglan by Love Notions. Um, I'd never made that pattern before, but um, I think it was recently on sale. And when a pattern goes for sale on the Love Notion website, so every Friday they have a featured pattern that goes on sale for five dollars, five US dollars. So all of their brand ambassadors um, typically post pictures or videos 
of their garments made from that pattern to try and, I guess, boost up the sales and stuff. So that day I saw a bunch of Rockford raglans made up by the ambassadors and yeah, they, they're, it's a really cool pattern. So I made this one towards the end of the month because I had been working on my Chilton trench coat for like a few days in a row and I needed like a quick win. I needed something that I really didn't have to think so hard um, about. <laughs> so this Rockford just fit the bill perfectly. It was super, super quick to put together. Now I made a 2X. I learned from my Harmony blouse and I sized up to a, to a 2X. I wanted the whole thing black but I didn't have enough of that black linen poly blend to make the whole top. So I decided to use a viscose jersey for the sleeves, the neck band, the hem band? No, there's no hem band on that one. So um, yeah, so the sleeves, the neck band, the cuffs were all in that viscose jersey, which I'd had in my stash forever. I can't even remember where I bought that from. But I love the finished top. I like raglan sleeves um, on me. And I love the swing style of the top. So very relaxed, very comfortable. And um, again, I did not shorten the sleeves. And I should have. They are ridiculously long. So when I make this again, I'm going to take out at least two inches off the sleeves. But other than that, I made a straight size 2X. Um, yeah, and I love my new top. I've worn it a few times already. And I will make more because I can basically make this with two cuts of like one yard for each fabric. So one yard for the bodice, one yard for the sleeves. Um, and I have a few remnants in my stash that I never knew what to make with. So like other than a tank top, what can you do with one yard of fabric? So um, I'm going to make raglan tees with, uh, with those remnants. So another successful make. Next up was a very small and quick project that I whipped up, um, my gosh, late in the month of October. Adam from Adam Sews published a new pattern recently and put it up on his website. It's for a trio of zipper pouches that basically nest inside one another. Like how cool is that? So he very nicely sent me his um, draft pattern basically. And I whipped up one of the pouches with some quilting cotton I'd had kicking around my sewing room forever. Like, how cute are these little girls? Like, look at this one with the sewing machine. I love this pouch. And the doctor with the kitty cat, or I'm guessing maybe that's a vet with the kitty cat. So, yeah, I love my new pouch. I'm putting, or I'm using it to store my marking tools. So I've got, like, chalk markers. I've got my Hera marker. So, yeah, I love this pouch. And I don't want to divulge any spoilers or anything, but I think quite a few ladies in my life are going to get pouches like this for Christmas. Super quick make. Adam also has a video tutorial on his channel demonstrating all of the steps um, to making this pouch. And he's also got a hack, if I remember correctly, to make the sides with like a window in vinyl so that you can see inside your pouch what's in there so i mean this kind of pouch is so practical you can use it as a makeup pouch you can store some tools you can for kids you can store their little knickknacks um yeah it's uh, possibilities are endless really and you can use, like, you can really go to town with the fabric you use for these pouches. Quilting cotton is, like, perfect for that. And you get so many fun prints in quilting cotton. So throw in some foam uh, to make the pouch a little sturdier and a zip. And you've got a really cool pouch.
And last, but certainly not least, I finally, finally finished my Chilton trench coat by Cashmerette this month. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I started working on this in September. I got all of my fabric cut and I started on the construction um, in September, but then ran out of month basically so I had to move this into October and thank goodness I had a week off this month because I don't know that I would have gotten it done I put on the last button on this October 31st in the evening so right on the last day of October I was determined to have this one made in October because I do have plans for another coat in November Plus, the weather is getting really cool now, and like very, very soon, it's going to be too cold to even wear a trench coat. So, I wanted it done. I made a size 18 EF at the bust, graded up to a 20 at the waist and hips, which is my usual size for cashmerette. And it's got, I would say, the perfect amount of ease. I can wear a bulky-ish sweater under under this or a hoodie under this i love my new trench coat it is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but it is definitely wearable i'm definitely very very proud of it there is a ton of top stitching <laughs> and oh my god the seam ripper um was my best friend while i was working on this because i wanted to get it as close to perfect as possible so I had to unpick a few things uh definitely the top stitching got unpicked a couple times um the pattern did have me scratching my head in a couple of spots just because I'd never made a coat before so when it was time to attach the lining to the main fabric I was like what what <laughs> um sewing in the lining at the sleeves and then finishing the kick pleat in the back. Anyways, I learned so much making this trench coat. It, yeah, it, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Not easy, not quick, but it was a lot of fun. It was just fun. And at the end of it, I have a coat and a garment that I am in love with and that I'm so proud I managed to complete. So my plan is to do a full pattern review of the Chilton and um, go live with this probably in a couple of weeks. Um, like I said, the pattern is good. The drafting by Cashmeret is always amazing, um, but definitely some of the instructions, I think, assumed experience with coat making and assumed knowledge I obviously didn't have. And I must not be a great Googler because I had a hard time finding videos or tutorials for some of the techniques and I was not able to find any sew alongs for the Chilton. So, and that, yeah, so, so some bits I would do, like crossing my fingers, I was doing the right thing. And sometimes it came out great and sometimes not so great. And I had to seam rip a few things, but yeah, all in all, it was a very, very positive experience and a great way to end the month of October. And there you have it, nine things done in the month of October, most of which I would say were successful. Um, a few things I need to tweak, a few patterns I'll need to make adjustments to, and one item already in the mending pile. But overall, I think a pretty good month. So I would love to know which one was your favorite. Have you made any of these patterns before? I would love to hear. So put any comments in the comment section below. Thank you for stopping by. Please give the video a like on your way out if you liked it. And consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.